All right, so today we're talking about the JavaScript structured clone method. Now, this is a method that allows you to create a copy of an object, which, okay, doesn't sound like a big deal. But in JavaScript, where objects are always dealt with as references, this actually can save a lot of work. So let's talk a little bit about the current state of JavaScript, how JavaScript works, what the difference is between deep and shallow copying, and then we can understand easily what structured clone is doing for us. So I've got three objects here. First one, where all the properties inside my object have primitives. So a primitive, if you're not familiar with them, in JavaScript, we've got primitives and we've got objects. Everything that's not a primitive is an object. The primitives is this small little list of things that are just values. Numbers, booleans, undefined, null, strings. Those are primitives. They're just a value. There's nothing else about them. An object has properties. It's got methods. It can have events, things like that. So objects are much more complex. When you're putting an object into a variable, like we did right here, this object, we're assigning it to this variable. We're not actually putting this stuff inside of here. This becomes a pointer to the location and memory where this is kept. Here, I've got an array. So again, this is not a primitive. It's an object. Arrays are objects as well. It's not a primitive, so it must be an object. So this array is stored in memory. This variable is a pointer to the location in memory. I've got another one where another object where one is a primitive, one of the properties is a primitive, the other one is an object. So it's a mixture. And here I've got one where I've got a primitive, a Boolean, and something that can't be serialized. Basically, if you've ever worked with JSON, you know you can convert objects into strings, a string representation of the object. Well, a function is not something that you can convert into string, pass it off to another programming language, and have it understand what this object is. So a function is non-serializable. All right. Now, if I'm going to make a copy of something, if it's a primitive, like this, so I've got a variable called num, I go 8. If I said let other equal num, I am actually copying. I've taken the value 8 and I've copied it and put it into other. So both of these variables have their own copy of the number 8. Simple enough. But if I do this with objects, let's say I'm going to create another variable called pointer1, and I'm going to set it equal to opt1. Now here, this is an object. But remember what we said before. This object is sitting in memory somewhere, and this is just a pointer to that location in memory where this is stored. So when I do this, I'm copying the reference. Both of these are now just pointers to where that thing is saved in memory. So let's check this out in a console. If I was to log out my variable, let's say I'm going to compare pointer1 and I want to know if it is the exact same object as obj1. So three equal signs lets me compare to see if they are actually the same object. So I'm going to run my script. True. Okay, great. So that means that these two are actually pointing to the exact same thing. Doesn't matter that the values inside of here were all primitives. It is an object itself. So if you do this, you are actually going to be just creating another reference to the location in memory. All right, now we do have an operator that lets us copy the stuff that's inside of there. So I'm going to create another one. Let's call this one spread one. And I want a copy. I want an actual copy of this thing. I know that everything inside of it is a primitive. So if I do this, if I use the spread operator, I'm saying get a copy of this thing. What's it pointing to? So I'm getting a copy of prop 1, getting a copy of prop 2, because both of them are holding primitives. It means I get an actual copy, just like we did right here. 
we're getting an actual copy of the value. So I'm creating two copies and I'm putting it in a brand new object. So I'm comparing it like that. Now, if I test this out, is obj1 the same object as spread1? We know they have the same values, but are they the same object? And false, they are not, which is what we want. Okay, great. So you think, all I have to do is this. I'm spreading it apart. I'm pulling out all the bits and pieces. Except, now we come to an object that's a little bit more complex. Here, this one's a primitive, so we would actually get a copy of this one if we did the spread operator. But prop 4, it's pointing to an object. So prop 4 is actually just a reference to wherever in memory this thing is stored it's not going to give us an actual copy of this. We're getting a copy of this property, but not this one. So, we want to figure out how to do that. All right. Now, I've done a video on shallow versus deep copy. The card linked to at the top uh, of the screen there. So, you can follow that if you want to learn a little bit more about deep versus shallow copy, and that would be talking more about uh, this thing and how you would actually copy the things that are inside. Let's just actually try and copy over all of the things that are in object two to make a brand new object here. So we'll create pointer two and we'll start with this. We'll say, okay, we're gonna take object two. Now what we're gonna have here is a new object called pointer two where prop three is going to be the same value, but it will be a brand new thing inside of pointer two. Prop four is going to be a variable inside of here, or a, point, a property inside of here, but it's going to be pointing to the same thing, names. It's not actually going to be a copy of that names value. Because remember, names is just a pointer to where this is saved in memory. So we have to do the next step saying, okay, pointer two dot prop four, we don't want it to be just obj2. What we want is we want it to be equal to a new array, which is going to extract the values from that names thing. Now, if we test it out, and we want to know if pointer2 is the same thing as object2, and we should get a false for that. And we do. So, all right, so it's two lines of code, not a big deal. But that's two lines of code because there was only one property. What if this array was not an array of primitive values like we have here, which is why I was able to do this and copy it over. What if this was an array filled with objects and every one of those objects contained multiple arrays and every one of those arrays contained an, an array of objects? So you can see it can really build up quite quickly. You can have something that's very large, which requires a lot of code, and you have to recursively loop through the entire structure to find all of the things inside of there that are objects and not primitives, so that you can spread them out and actually get a copy of them to build your new object. So it's a lot of work, um, and that's why Structure Clone is going to save us if we want to do this now. So let's say copy one. I want a copy of obj1. And copy two, I want a copy of obj2. So this one and this one. This one shouldn't be a problem. It was just, we did this thing originally. And this one, we had the issue with the array. With this new method, structured clone, That's all I have to do. And with this one, it's the exact same thing. This method is actually going to do all of that required recursive checking to see if the values inside there are objects or primitives. And whenever there's an object, it will actually create a copy for us. So we can compare those now. Copy one and obj one. Are they the same thing? And how about copy two and obj two? 
false and false. We do actually have a copy here of each of them. And if we were to write them out, so let's take a look at copy one and let's take a look at copy two and see what we have inside of those. Yeah, okay, that is the same as this. And copy two, sure enough, we have an array with all those values inside there assigned to prop four. Fantastic, so that works for us. Now, one last thing to talk about is the potential for error. What if your object has something like this, something that's non-serializable? Okay, so just to show you what you're going to get for that, I'm gonna wrap this in a try-catch block. I will try to do a structured clone of our invalid object, the one with the function in here, obj3. So we're gonna do a copy of that one with our new wonderful method. There we go, ob3. And if it fails, we should see what kind of error we're gonna get. Let's clear this and run again. And here it is at the end. Data clone error. So this is the kind of error that you're going to get. It will generate that error. So it's something that you can test for. It's something you can check for to see. Is that what I'm getting? If it is, then you know the problem. You know that there's something inside your object that is not serializable. Okay. And that's it. That's the introduction to Structured Clone. There is one other thing that you can do with it, but I'm going to put that into a separate video all on its own. And that has to do with transferring ownership of objects or data that is inside your object from the original to the copy that you're creating with Structured Clone. All right. If you're looking for a copy of this code, uh, code so you can play around with it, look into the description. You'll find it there. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I answer whatever I have time for. And as always, Thanks for watching.